Well, how did that farm hand? I just came around to... Oh, good heavens! What in the world do you think you're doing out here? Put that axe down this instant or I'll wrench it from those farm hands myself. Don't remind me of the indignity and simply do as I say. You out here in the middle of a snowbank trying to cut wet wood to warm your whistle? That's a fool's errand, you know, right? Mama didn't raise a fool out yet by any chance, cause you could have fooled me. Anyone who hadn't known you or your work ethic would assume that you're drunk off your ass on moonshine, thinking you had found the mineral life at the bottom of a bottle. Cause you ain't making a lick of sense. I had seen you swinging that axe over those hills, and I was hoping and praying you was doing something with a tad more sense to its name, like cutting off the tails of three blind mice, because I ain't seen you split a single log in the time it came from me to come up from that there hill. And the big blizzards tonight if you are looking to save yourself from the trouble of the frost. I'd hate to see you bitten, even once. I heard it makes you twice as shy, and surely our town's good Samaritan doesn't need anything else to make a martyr out of them. Why are you out here, chopping wet wood, trying to spin straw to gold? You were so careful to collect firewood during those summer months when the dry sticks would go up like Satan's candles. Oh, don't tell me. You gave it all away? Some miserable little creature stopped by your doorstep, shivering from the cold, and asked you to have mercy on them. And you decided it was the perfect time of year to play little match girl. Oh, bless your heart, truly. And I mean truly bless it. Apply to the sainthood for the levels of blessings you're handing out. But my dear sweet farm hand, what are yourself? What of yourself? I told you this town was going to bleed you dry one of these days. I down and out told you that there's snakes slithering around here. You can't be the only mongoose worth its spit if you're ever going to survive out here in this neck of the woods. You fight for everyone else. But who in this wide, wide world of yours are you going to let fight for you? Me. I reckon. It's gotta be me. Who else will? Who else will when everyone else is so willing to feast on the fruits of your labor and leave ya holding the check? I always said that none of those small town minds had your best interests at heart. Small minded is more like it for taking an apple dumpling like ya for granted. But if I'm the only one in these hills who cares, then by God, I'll be the only one that cares. You're headed to my place for a warm bath, meal, and bed, farmhand. Those farmhands can only be so useful when you only have three fingers left to spare on each. Now, did I stutter? You are gonna walk your ass to my pickup truck before you freeze it off. Is that clear? I said, is that clear? Or have these here winds so winter gotten so loud you've gone deaf from it? Or should I suppose they're too frostbitten to be of any use any longer? By golly, what has made you so stubborn? Mules have got nothing on you right now. It's a real head scratcher, don't you know? You take my offers of sweet tea in the summertime and breaks when I offer them. If you happen to be doing me a good turn. Who's working it to the bone under these kind of conditions? I see now. You gave away that firewood for two reasons. One, your heart is softer than a sheep on a cloud of marshmallows. And two, it wasn't going to do you no good anyways, with your main source of heat and busted and your fireplace sunk with snow. I wouldn't be surprised if your locale was colder on the inside than the outside. So what were your plans after you tossed out all that snow to begin with? 
bring in as many sticks as you could and just hope and pray and plead with yourself that just one of them would take a spark. That didn't work too well for a felon named Jack London, last I hear. All the more reason for you to head in along with me. I got a nice fire going, I got the perfect ingredients for a big pot of gumbo like my mama used to make, and I got far too many blankets to snuggle under, all lonesome-like, and... And... Forgive my lack of decorum and manners when I say this, but... You truly left me no other choice. I won't take no for an answer any longer. Ha! <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Did you forget who I was? I might be an elegant little lady, a darling Clementine, but I'm still a country gal born and raised. And no bonnet was ever going to keep me from bond raising with the big boys. I used to be a real hellion, if you can believe. I bet that you can. Now, what's with all the fussing? You think I was about to hog tie you to the bed and break both your legs like the broad from misery. I'm not even trying to hurt you. I'm more impressed that you still have the energy to squirm like this when you're soaked to the bone. Are you not freezing? This is the kind of weather that makes me wish I could just flat out curl up and die. Now come now. What's really bothering you? You wouldn't fight so much if you didn't think it was worth fighting for. And, as sad as it is to say, I don't think you'd push and pull so hard with this. It was really only worth a matter of your pride. So tell me. What troubles your farmhand? The townsfolk will talk? About what? Us? What else do they ever do? It's always been nothing but blah, blah, blah from these folks. As if gossip isn't simply a southern pastime on its own. Those folks will say anything if they think it'll light up the room. As in, keep the lights on in the room if you catch my drift. They hunt for a pulse like a vampire bat going in for the kill. I assure you, anything they have to say would not bother me one bit. Would it bother you as much as you're making it sound like it would? It's very kind of you to worry about my dignity. My honor. There's not a lot of gentle folks like you left in the world. But the thought of you destroying yourself like this just positively tears me up inside, so... Look, if you're worried about those town folks, and the church, and all those other yahoos, I'll be sure to give them a peace of mind for wrecking your peace of mind. But please, let me keep you warm. It would break my heart into a billion little pieces to see you suffering out there. Thank you, love. It is such a shame about all this, don't you know? I mean, your primary heating system broke down, and your failsafe was sabotaged by the world? That must take some incredibly terrible conditions. Just... Terrible luck. But, I do like to believe we make our own luck in this world. What say you, farmhands?